Today, uh, Ross, Maiden, and I flew out from Columbia and South Carolina, from where IBHS is based uh, at our research center. We came out here to 3D scan a gargantuan hailstone to preserve its unique shape so that hail research can continue and we can better understand hailstones, how they form, how they grow in size and shape, so that we can better prepare our homes and businesses for future yeah. hailstones. This stone is very unique in all of its bumps and crevices that it has that took Ross a little bit to get all the 3D scan and all the nooks and crannies in there. But that's what we want to understand is why these hailstones have their shape. As they grow, they become less spherical generally. So understanding those relationships helps us advance science in the air. The Salado stone is competing against the Hondo hailstone, which we scanned last year. It measured 6.416 inches. Hondo, uh, 6.416 inches is the largest in the state of Texas. The largest hailstone in the country fell in Vivian, South Dakota back in 2010 and is eight inches in diameter. Right now we know that this hailstone was gargantuan. We'll take the scan back, Ross will do some analyzing on it, get some precise measurements, that's what the 3D scanner allows for, and then we'll have a final understanding of what its maximum diameter is. We'll also be able to understand its circumference, its volume, and other measurements like that. Shrinkage is definitely a concern, so Ross and I are part of the IBHS Hail Quick Response Team. This is the fifth time the team has gone out. Uh, Ross and I have been together on uh, four of them for documenting gargantuan hailstones. We've included three state records in that. We've scanned the Alabama state record, the Texas state record, and the Colorado state record. When hail happens, we come out there, the banking homeowner puts it in the freezer and preserves it for us. We'll make the trip out to 3D scan it. So we always appreciate homeowners who reach out to the National Weather Service and give those hail reports. That citizen science is extremely critical to meteorology and weather forecasting.